let us pray. Everlasting God, our Maker and Redeemer, grant us with all the faithful departed the sure benefits of thy Son, saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day, when thou dost gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of thy promises. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. <clears throat> My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, Gone is my glory, and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it, and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? 
But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. said to them, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing and he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomsoever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son so that all may honour the Son, just as they honour the Father. Anyone who does not honour the Son, does not honour the Father who sent him. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment but has passed from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The great feast of all saints and the commemoration of all souls are both rooted in the joyful doctrine of the communion of saints. They tell us that all those who belong to Christ share together in his victory over sin and death, and therefore they share in the eternal life of God the Blessed Trinity. And St. John points toward that in the Gospel passage we've just heard. <clears throat> For those living in Christ, time and space are annihilated. We and our Christian brothers and sisters of every age are united in him now. But all saints and all souls also differ from each other. On all saints, we may remember our favorite particular saints, but the emphasis of our celebration is primarily collective. We praise and thank God for all the saintly people, whether known and recognized or unknown to us. On all souls, certainly we remember the entire company of the faithful departed, hence the catafalque. But the emphasis here is primarily individual. We come to this requiem bearing on our hearts those whom we love, but who are now on another shore and in a greater light. The geography of that shore and the nature of that light are not our concern. Over the centuries, there have been countless imaginary descriptions of the conditions in which the faithful departed live. But they can never be other than attempts at describing the indescribable. Anything which touches on the eternal life of God and eternal life in God is going to defeat the furthest reaches of speculation. Even our blessed Lord said relatively little on the matter, apart from a pretty general reference to many heavenly dwelling places, and being clear that God is a God not of the dead, but of the living. In his sight all are alive. And the church is careful not to go much beyond this, except to make clear that eternal life is given to us through the Son of God. <clears throat> Yet we can't let the departed whom we love simply drift away from us into a land unknown, because we are bound together with them in Christ. And just as every individual matters eternally to God, so every person we love matters eternally to us. And all souls gives us the blessed opportunity to remember and give thanks for the unbroken bond we have with them. To try and get some sense of what this means for us, here are some words of the Anglican priest and poet David Scott, who died recently. 
he recalls a dream of celebrating a weekday mass in a church dedicated, appropriately enough, to all saints. Everything goes as usual, he says, until counting out the bread, I looked and saw the church was full of people, all alert and tall and ready, some long dead had now returned to sing. Some recent friends, all light and shining in the latticed sun. I could not move for those that loved that place. And so it is always. If our eyes were to be opened, and sometimes it happens, we here tonight would see the great company of the faithful pressing around us. Among them, those who have loved this place, and those forever united with us in mutual love. This is where the particularity of all souls comes home to us. And it's why we love this commemoration, where we meet at the altar with those given to us in this life who have stepped beyond it. And there's something which follows from this. The ancient Egyptians had a saying, to speak the name of the dead is to make them live again. We go much further than that, because our faith and hope and trust is that the faithful departed have followed Christ through the gate of death into a life beyond all life previously known. But they have not ceased from being themselves or from being part of the great company we are in Christ. Surely then, it's important on this day that we should hear their names spoken once more in the Christian congregation. But if All Souls gives us the opportunity to remember that we and the faithful are united in Christ, it can also remind us of something else. We've noticed that eternal life with God goes beyond our comprehension and beyond our ability to picture it. We must also remember that God is dynamic. The life of God in which we are all caught up does not stand still. The purposes of God are always calling us forward, just as they call the whole creation forward. This means that the faithful departed also live, so to speak, in the movement of God, the Holy Trinity. So while those who are dear to us are still entirely themselves, they are becoming far more themselves than ever they were. We remember them as we knew them. Of course, we can't do otherwise. But we must accept 
but our memory of them is not like the fullness of them as they now are. All souls, in a fascinating way, brings us closer to those we love, who are in the ever deeper life of God. Yet at the same time, it tells us that we mustn't cling to the memory of them as something stationary. As we've seen, words fail us when we speak of the life of departed Christian souls, which is why we give thanks to God that at the altar there is no need for words. We rejoice in our communion with them as we come to communion with our Lord. But if we do want some words, let's turn to the 20th century Dean of York, Eric Milner White. In a prayer for the faithful departed, he writes this. O oh God, as long as thou art with thy servants, thy children, they are with thee. They lose nothing by dying. They depart out of the world, but not out of thy family. They vanish from our sight but not from thy care. One sun hath set upon them, but a greater is risen. O Father, O Saviour, O Giver of life, by thy mercy, thine unalterable love, Gather thy sons and daughters unto thyself. May they rejoice in the heavenly Jerusalem of grace and peace, and praise thee among the choirs of the blessed in joy without end. Let us unite our prayers with the prayers of the Church penitent and of the Church triumphant. Let us pray for all the souls of the faithful departed. In a moment of silence, let us hold before God the names of those we love, but see on this earth no longer, trusting in the promise that in a greater light and upon a farther shore, we shall in the Lord's time join them once more. Lord, in thy mercy, for the architects and engineers, for the artists and labourers who imagined, fashioned and maintained this building, an earthly vision of the heavenly Jerusalem. We pray for deceased benefactors of All Saints Margaret Street and for the souls of all those who have contributed to this place. Lord, hear us. For the souls of all those who have worshipped here and for the departed clergy who ministered to them, for those who have served, taught and made music in this place to the glory of Almighty God, and for deceased members of All Saints Sisters of the Poor. 
Lord, in thy mercy, for our forebears who rekindled the light of the Catholic faith within the Church of England, and for all those since who have come into relationship with Jesus Christ through their witness. Lord, in thy mercy, for victims of the violence and warfare, the injustice and indifference that yet pervade our world. Lord, in thy mercy, for the recently departed and for those who will die this night, for all souls beloved to us and for those known only to God, let us pray together. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and may life perpetual shine upon them. Bring us to thy heavenly city, O Lord, to the joyful gathering of thousands of angels, to the assembly of your firstborn, to the spirits of the saints made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that promises peace. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And in thy spirit.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of thy hands, and for the grace and glory of his name, and our good and the good of all his holy church. We beseech thee, O Lord, to have mercy on the souls of thy servants, for whom we offer unto thee this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we most humbly entreat thy majesty that this our service being acceptable in thy sight may be found worthy to attain to everlasting rest. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is in the Christ of it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead, and doth comfort us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to all thy faithful people, O Lord, life is changed and not ended, and when this earthly dwelling doth turn to dust, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing.
Glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, so merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, and in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee, to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty. World without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say.
us pray. O God of love, grant that the death and resurrection of Christ, which we have celebrated in this sacrament, may bring us with all the faithful departed into the peace of thine eternal home. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and salvation, to whom be glory for time and eternity. Amen. Absolve, O Lord, we beseech thee, the souls of thy servants from every bond of sin, that in the glory of the resurrection they may be raised up amid thy saints and elect unto newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let thy perpetual shine. May they rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. 